What impressed me most about Al, and David too, was they were going to do their thing. Um, Frank Sinatra made a song about saying he did it his way. Well, the Maisels did it their way. In the 1960s, when Al and David and I started, uh, I started a few years before they did. Well, I didn't start making films before they did because they were, Al as a psychologist was making films on psychology in Russia at the time, but they were just mostly short films. Uh, they hadn't done any long form yet. Uh, and it, but it was a great time. But it wasn't a great time because we did things that nobody else has done since. Now, as a matter of fact, it's an embarrassment of riches, I like to call it now, because of the opportunities that we have to get, if not on the airways, to get on the internet, to get, to get our films made, to get our films out. So it, it wasn't so much it was the golden age, but what it was, it was the age of the handheld. The films being made in those times were made on big tripods with big heavy cameras, and if they had a light camera, it was a little wind-up camera to get what they call it, B-roll. But uh, so the hand handheld camera came in, and this picture of Al with his his camera showed that not only did he use a handheld camera, he designed one for himself. He made it his way. Al was concerned not only with what you did, but how you did it. And he wanted a camera that would allow him to do exactly what he wanted to do, free him up from the tyranny of technology. And also the, the participants, those who, who were in front of his camera, they didn't have to accommodate bright lights and setting up cameras and wait now, we'll be ready in 15 minutes. Uh, so it was, a, it was, Al was concerned not only with the product that they would end up, but the process, making that pro process as easy as possible for the participants and as effective as possible for the filmmaker. I don't know why it happened. You know, when you're when you're 88 years old like I am, you remember there's a little little kind of fractures in your in your memory bank. But I do remember that I hired Al and Al hired me. Now I don't know who did what first. Uh, I think I hired him first because I had a commercial job to do, uh, shooting. Um, an oil a company that did data gathering beneath the earth, Schlumberger, a very famous company. And uh, for some reason, I thought Al could do a great job filming the men as they, the roughnecks, as they drilled for oil in West Texas. And he did a fabulous job. Uh, whether that preceded him hiring me or not, I don't know. But he, th but he hired me on his first feature film, uh, his first long form, his first feature film. Uh, and I think partly because he thought that I had achieved some success because I had gotten on American television with long form film and he hadn't quite yet, or maybe because he just didn't want to do that shoot. It was a simple shoot for a marvelous film called Showman about, uh, about Joe Levine. And it was a shoot in a, in a clothing store in Boston. And I, so I always told myself that Al wanted to see how I shot so he would get awards too. Probably not true. He probably just didn't want to go to Boston and shoot a, sh a shot in a clothing store. In a sense, maybe I'm, I'm splitting hairs to say that we were different. I think we were different in, the, in what we embraced. I embraced a larger picture for the most part than Al did. But we both ended up seeing the picture through the eyes of individuals because ultimately that's what was clear to me about Al, that this was a guy, whether, whether his psychological background did it or whether his beginning a filmmaker and seeing what that was like did it, I don't know what did it, but I know that when you were with Al, you knew that what he was about was understanding and revealing and expressing what was true about the individuals in front of his camera. Maybe, maybe David was more interested in the, in the theatricality and the drama, uh, the drama of the characters. But Al was interested in, what does this say about human beings? So it's no surprise that uh, one day he started a little theater up in Harlem and started a little Maisel's Film Institute because I think he, he, he wanted the, his vision, not his vision, he wanted the vision of human beings as worth paying attention to, as worth celebrating, and as worth understanding, that that should be promoted 
long after he is gone. He's gone now, but that vision of caring about people, understanding them, and responding to them, and celebrating their humanness, even if it's a little weird or a little funny to us, that was worth doing, and that's worth continuing to do. And Al's vision is preserved and, and is being celebrated at the Maisel's Institute in New York, even as we talk. Thank you, Al.